Hi, I'm Lorraine Snyder, and I'm doing a book report, When Women Pray, by T.D. Jakes. And first, I would like to give honor to Cindy Dennis, Tammy Franklin Johnson, and everyone listening to this message, to God be the glory. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be used of you, and you be glorified in what you would have me teach. My message is on Hannah and Sarah. Hannah was married to Elkanah, and Elkanah was a wealthy man, and he was wealthy because we know he had cattle. He um, brought sheep or goats or bulls for offerings, whereas poor families brought grain and bread or a pair of birds for their sacrifices. Hannah was a woman of prayer. She couldn't bear children for 10 years, so Elkanah married uh, Hannah would uh, cry and didn't eat because of her um, remarks that she made to her and ridiculed her. Sometimes if you're really desperate for a miracle or a breakthrough and nothing else works, you sometimes have to fast like Hannah. There are many different kinds of fasts and um, there are some fasts that you can do a long fast, like 40-day fast, or 21-day Daniel fast, or a three-day Esther fast, or fasting from TV or online, or no sweets fast, or etc. But if you don't do the one God says, it won't work for your miracle. Hannah also, she didn't get even or angry with bitter words of hate to Penal. Hannah talked to God about her problems. She didn't tell everyone her problems. She was a woman of faith and prayer. We lack faith a lot of times. And if we if we lack our, in our faith, God can increase our faith if we believe and if we pray. Uh, sometimes um, we make ignorant choices and demons hide where we're ignorant. And a lot of times has to do with how we were raised. If we were abused, we usually are drawn to people that are abusive and bad relationships. And then sometimes also the devil sends people across our path that test and try us and make us frustrated and so on. But God can help us get out. We don't have to stay in that, that same situation. God can turn it for our good if we believe and if we pray and trust him. And Isaiah, I mean, I mean, Psalm 119.11 says, Thy word, if I hid my heart, that I might not sin against you, Lord. And Hannah, I can relate to Hannah, as I'm sure many of you can. She was falsely accused by being drunk with wine when she was trying to do the right thing and pray and seek God. But that's how the devil works. Oops. Anyway. God allows sometimes to see how we respond when he allows people to falsely accuse us. Like Joyce Meyer says, we can be bitter or we can be better. Mike Murnock says that, uh, one, one quote that helped me that he said, he says, false accusation is the last stage before supernatural promotion. So when, when people falsely accuse me, I rejoice and I thank God for my promotion and the pain and the hurt goes away. Also, another quote from Mike Murdoch that's helped me, Satan will always attack those next in line for promotion or a blessing. Hannah was next in line for her breakthrough. So he thought he could stop her with that, but it didn't work. God kept up, helped her to keep a right attitude, and she fasted and prayed. Bishop Jake says that the longing secret in her heart was her prayer was answered. Psalm 147, 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Proverbs 18, 21, life and death is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hannah spoke life to herself when she poured out herself to God, and God healed her broken heart. God showed me when I used to tell everyone my problems I had from my ex-husband's abuse. I was... Uh, Tying God's hands when I did that, God told me. And as long as I kept doing that, it, it 
kept me in bondage. And uh, I couldn't break free until I was willing to let God um, help me with my tongue and not speak a negative report, not dwell on the past, and to come in agreement with God. And that's when God can start the healing. And also, there's power also in agreement. If you don't have the faith to um, do like Hannah did, to not tell nobody her problem, like she kept it, just talk to God about it. If you don't have that kind of faith, then you can tell one person, only one person, not everybody, and then come in agreement with, and then that's okay. God don't mind us standing in agreement with one person because there is power in agreement. But it doesn't help if we talk to too many people. Have, have someone agree and keep speaking uh, the problem or a negative report won't help you get free. With God's help and in the word is the way the answer has for us to get free. John 8.32 says, you shall know the truth and the truth has set you free. And also, I heard it paraphrase that the truth that you know will set you free. And I believe it because I've seen God do that in my life. The more truth that I know, <clears throat> the more knowledge that you have, the more you can um, overcome the attacks of the enemy and the lies of the enemy. But where we're ignorant is where the enemy tries to trip us up. And it was also... Um, God was also trying to heal me many times, but I didn't always understand what God was telling me to do. And I understood now that I had to forgive and you have to choose to forgive. I learned somebody also said, because when you choose to forgive, that also helps you to heal. Forgiveness will never come. Otherwise, you can't just keep waiting for forgiveness. It won't come. You have to choose to and speak the word and praise God. And there are also three weapons of warfare I learned. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God are the only things the devil will listen to. Like Bishop Jake says, God allows relationships to provoke you, not to anger or jealousy. That's where the devil will come in and tempt you. But because we are women of prayer, we seek God first. Like Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. And wait for his answer, and he will answer. And God will provoke us to greatness, like Bishop Jake says. God can turn anyone, anything around if we believe him. Like Bishop Jake also says, I believe, too, that the key to unlock God's blessing is, um, is through prayer. And, um, oh, sorry. Like also Bishop Jake says, my prayers wasn't getting answered a lot of times for many years. Even when I obeyed God, I thought I was saying the wrong, not the right words, or I thought I needed someone more anointed than me to pray with but bishop says simply come to god and ask so then i learned also that god said or showed me that uh i didn't get my biggest prayers answered because i wasn't asking questions i wasn't asking the right questions so i started asking god questions why didn't things work out when i obeyed and i fasted and i sought the lord and I did everything I knew to do. And so I asked God, what went wrong? And so God would show me what went wrong. And I, I'm not saying that to confuse anybody because I have heard people say, no, we should never question God. That's not the same thing. I wasn't questioning like when God told me to do something to be obedient. I was questioning where did I mess up? And then God answered and he showed me. And so that brought a lot of healing. And so I do better the next time. My next topic is on Sarah. When, when women pray, we find hope, Bishop Jake says. Joy in unexpected places. I believe God loves to surprise us with blessings when we obey him. I can't imagine what it must have been like to be 89 years old and still look young, as good as Sarah did for in her old 
old age for her husband, but she too was like Hannah, childless and a lot older than Hannah. And yet, Hannah and Sarah still could have been bitter to God even, and her, or to her husband. And then also Sarah could have also been bitter and to her husband when he lied two times and put her in danger in the king's harem and said she was his sister. But she could have been bitter by putting her in danger, but because she was a woman of prayer, she prayed and believed God would protect her. And maybe Abraham prayed too. I don't know. Sarah didn't allow fear or worry or doubt to control her, her thinking or her thinking. She had faith in God to deliver her a way out and protect her. And God did, did just that. Well, the devil didn't win those times in Sarah, but God, uh, when, when her husband Abraham lied and said that he, she was his sister, uh, she believed that maybe God would use her maid. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, she believed, change that. She believed that God would use her maid to um, bring the promised children that God said. After Hagar, Sarah's maid conceived, Hagar despised Sarah. And Sarah realized she made a mistake because ignorance creates a crisis. But information solves it. The more Bible knowledge you have, the less mistakes you make that I learned from a pastor told me. And I, I believe that's true because he's helped me with that. And let's see. And that time, let's see. And so, but he, but the enemy lost and didn't bring the one, the son that was promised uh, through Ishmael. Isaac did come year, uh, a year later after the angel of the Lord spoke because Sarah was a woman of faith and prayer. She didn't have faith at first, but she did have faith later. She must have forgiven Hagar or herself, or the promise wouldn't have come to pass. I think we all at some point in our lives um, have been where Sarah and Hannah was. But God is going to bring about a miracle another way. Many times, uh, many of us do the same in our own strength or get impatient and try to deal with it ourselves but we're not perfect but God can turn anything around even when we mess up uh, the Bible says people are destroyed for lack of knowledge Hosea 4 6 Proverbs 11 9 says but through knowledge the just shall be delivered I'm far from perfect but I don't claim to have all the answers yet but I'm determined to have more knowledge so the enemy can't hide anywhere anymore in my prayer time or my life. I want to help others to know what God has taught me. And I want to help others too. And Bishop Jake says, aren't you grateful? God knows you better than you know yourself. Aren't you grateful? God's spirit is living inside you and understands exactly what you need. Even when you are unable to articulate the need in a way that makes sense. I'm grateful he offers what we need and never knew what we needed and hear the secret whispers in our hearts. In closing, I would like to share, like I would like to share also another thing that's helped me, what Mike Murdoch says, champions talk differently. They discuss their future, not their past, their victories, not their defeats. Never say anything you don't want the devil to use. Start saying what God says about your life. I believe that Hannah and Sarah did, did that. That's why they had their miracles. Amen.